In this single video I am going to show you how to differentiate a well taken chest x-ray from a poor quality chest x-ray. I am going to describe the normal anatomical structures you should recognize and talk about the basic pathological findings and its diagnosis. Let's start! First of all, we have to be aware that these x-rays are not completely parallel to the body, they are emitted from a source at about the heart's height. This will have the effect that as the rays travel further from the source, they will create an enlargement effect that will give a distorted image of what's going inside the chest. This is why when we take a frontal chest x-ray, we will always do a posterior anterior shot or PA in order to get as little as an enlargement effect as possible. Notice that whether we take a PA or a lateral shot, the scapulas will always be a big problem. Since they are dense bone tissue, they will obscure the things that we really want to see inside the chest. Therefore, we will ask the patient to take a sort of ballet dancer position that sets the scapulas apart and clear the way for our x-ray. It is of extreme importance that our x-ray are always taken during a post-deep inspiration in order to make room for important organs within the chest. When we analyze the technical quality of a chest x-ray, we will have to take a look at four major points. The first of them is the penetration. This means how potent our x-rays are. A film taken with too much penetration will remark dense structures, but won't allow us to look at finer structures, and a light penetration won't even trespass the chest wall effectively. In order to check our penetration, we will check if you can notice the body of the vertebrae behind the heart. If you can see them, we are okay. Then we will focus in the inspiration. If our x-ray was taken with a patient exhaling or not inhaling enough, then the organs within the chest will be compressed and we might get a false perception of them. In order to certify a good inspiration, we should always see 9 or 10 posterior ribs attaching to the vertebrae. Here we can see a case with a poor inspiration that might, to a novice student, give the impression of being a cardiomegaly, which is not true, it just lacks enough inspiration. When we take a PA to a patient, it's important that he stands at a perpendicular plane in relationship to the source of the rays. If not, we might end up again with a distorted image. To make sure the film has no rotation, we need to check if the spinous processes of the upper thoracic vertebrae are located precisely in between the clavicles of both sides. The last major element that we should focus in is the angulation. If the angulation is not perpendicular, this means that the sword is under or above the heart's horizontal line, we might end up once again with a false cardiomegaly. In order to assess this, we need to check that the clavicles are not above the rib cage. If this is not the case, we have an angulated PA chest x-ray. The most basic rule in radiography, actually in every field of medical imaging, is that the images are always inverted. In chest x-ray, what you see as the left side is just the right side of the patient, and obviously what you see as the right side is actually the patient's left side. This is easy to understand, if you just think that the x-ray was taken with the patient looking at the source of the rays. But when you look at a chest x-ray, you do not only have to keep in mind that, you should also know that your brain is trained to look at the anatomy of the heart, lungs and mediastinum, neglecting everything else. However, rotating the image forces your eyes to focus on more dense structures namely ribs and other bones, making it easy to spot fractures. Never forget this because it is a life-saving tip. In a PA we should be able to identify the edges of all the heart chambers but the right atrium. You should notice here that the vessels of the inferior lung are much denser than the upper lungs. This is due to gravity and is completely normal. At T4 level, look at the carina, which should not be wider than 100 degrees. Always keep in mind that the lung lobes widely superimpose each other. Notice that since the right middle lobe is the one directly related to the heart's right margin, any kind of consolidation can be easily distinguished because of the silhouette signed in this border. On a lateral x-ray, there aren't many structures to notice, and most likely the major benefit is the clear view of the costophrenic angles right in the back, which make them ideal for diagnosis of small pleural effusions. 
The heart should touch the inferior one-third of the sternum and always leave a translucent triangle in the back. In this section we will explore the most common clinical findings in the following pathologies. Pulmonary hypertension is revealed by an enlargement of the apical vessels of the lung, which under normal pressures due to gravity should be transparent. Some etiologies of pulmonary hypertension might end up causing pulmonary edema. In acute cases, when the edema first appears, it concentrates in the surrounding of the ileum, creating the characteristic butt wind pattern. Then, when the edema settles, the parenchyma takes a blurry and fuzzy tone, mainly in the lower lobes, looking like cotton, which help us differentiate it from fibrosis, which doesn't look soft but rather present a honeycomb pattern. Another remarkable sign is the presence of septal lines, extending inwards from the periphery, caused by the engorgement of lymphatic vessels due to excess of liquid to drain. Cardiomegaly is present when the ratio of the chest wall to the width of the heart is bigger than 0.5. But you will have to notice that not all cardiomegalies involve the whole heart. The chamber which is enlarged can be distinguished determining which border protrudes into the metastinum. A growth of the left atrium would protrude clearly to the left, and sometimes, if it has grown enough, even into the right lower corner of the heart. A growth of the left ventricle will displace the tip beyond the fifth rib. A growth of the right ventricle will increase the heart contact area with the sternum. A growth of the right atrium is hard to notice because it doesn't change any edge on the PA X-ray. A dissection of the ascendant aorta will make the silhouette protrude to the right and a dissection of the descendant one to the left. Four keys are characteristic of heart failure and when present can be used to discern it from pulmonary hypertension of another cause. First, pulmonary edema. Second, bilateral pleural effusions. Three, septal lines, also called curly B lines. And four, cardiomegaly. In pneumonia, we will find consolidation and air bronchogram. The presence of air bronchogram is indicating us that the density is in the alveoli and not the large airways. A good tip for discerning between pneumonia and a solid mass is that the vessels that pass through the mass get distorted, in opposition to pneumonia consolidations, where vessels run through the consolidation intact. Arelectasis is defined by the massive collapse of lung alveoli. The collapse generates a suction force that causes elevation of the diaphragm, reduced intercostal spaces and deviation of the trachea. It is very usual to misinterpret pneumonias as atelectasis, but since this compromises a whole segment, the images are sharp and edgy, and not blunt like in pneumonias. The primary form of TB is found almost exclusively in kids and immunodepressed patients. It is characterized by peripheral lung masses, gonfoci, and iliar enlargement due to active iliar lymph nodes. Secondary TB usually generates consolidations with cavitations due to necrosis, especially towards the apical segments, related to fibrosis and calcifications. Miliar TB is caused by bloodborne dissemination of bacteria, generating multiple small foci without cavitation. It is typical fibrosis in opposition to consolidations, a honeycomb pattern. In all pneumothorax, the most distinctive element is the edge of visceral pleura. Attention pneumothorax is caused when the air is pumped into the pleural cavity but cannot get out, therefore pushing important structures in the mediastinum, like the heart. Hydropneumothorax has a distinctive water level parallel to the ground in addition to the common signs of pneumothorax mentioned before. In pleural effusions, free liquid accumulation in the bottom of the lung erases the normal triangular edge of pleural cavity, creating an upper curvature called Damoiseau curve. Small effusions are almost uniquely seen on lateral x-rays. COPD produces thorax expansion which is characterized by a lower and plain diaphragm and an anterior-posterior chest cavity length equal to lateral length. Moreover, it is very remarkable the findings of a translucent parenchyma and bullae, which looks like big spaces of free air. 
Well, that's pretty much all I have to say about chest x-ray. If you like the video and want to see more, please remember to subscribe.